At the outset, I would like to thank all the viewers for their overwhelming response to my first video in this series. And today, we shall learn how to record normal cardiogram. For this, heart is attached to the lever which records its movement on the moving chymograph. But before we start, kindly pause the video and read the disclaimer. Okay, first we shall learn about Starling's heart lever, which is an essential instrument in cardiac muscle experiment. It is a simple lever system which has a standard size holder along with screw at its one end. It helps in fixing the lever on the stand at a desirable position. Other end of the plate has lever system. Short arm of the lever is thin and lightweight metal plate which is freely movable at its junction with the thick plate. This point is fulcrum. The other end of the plate has a thin, long, lightweight rod. It acts as long arm of the lever. A lightweight plastic pointer is attached to its end which records the amplified movement on the chymograph. As you can note, the thick plate has thin vertical metal rod near the fulcrum. This rod bears another thin but movable rod with a spring. Other end of the spring is inserted in the movable plate. This adjustable spring system helps to adjust tension on the heart so that maximum force of contraction can be recorded. Usually, in the next hole, a small thread with a metal hook is tied. This hook is inserted into the tip of the ventricle. So on the stand, we fix the frog board first and then the heart lever above it as shown here. Once the dissection is done, frog is placed on the board. The ventricle is gently held between the fingers and the hook is inserted through the tip of the ventricle without piercing the chamber. We frequently pour small amount of normal saline or ringer solution to prevent the preparation from drying. It also maintains ionic balance and tissue works for longer duration. Now the lever is elevated till the heart becomes vertical, making sure that it does not exert any undue tension on the heart. At this position, if the long arm of the lever is inclined, then the spring tension is adjusted to make the lever perfectly horizontal. Once the lever is adjusted, the pointer is lightly touched to the recording surface to record the cardiac activity. Now as you can note, with every contraction, lever is pulled downward and relaxation moves the lever up. So in this setup, every systole is recorded as downstroke and diastole as upstroke. The recording of this mechanical activity of the heart is known as normal cardiogram. Before understanding the normal cardiogram and its component, let us have a quick look at the amphibian heart and how it differs from the mammalian heart. Frog's heart has three chamber, two atria and one ventricle. Like mammalian heart, right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from the body and the left atrium receives oxygenated blood from the lungs. From both the atria, blood enters into the ventricle. Junction of atria and ventricle is marked by atrioventricular groove. Ventricle has folds within it. These folds maintain separation of blood from two atria. Hence, despite single ventricle, there is only partial mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Ventricle pumps the blood into the truncus arteriosus. You can easily make out truncus arteriosus here. Initial part of the truncus arteriosus is conus arteriosus. It is a longer and broad segment and possesses spiral valve within it. This valve helps to direct oxygenated blood into the aorta and deoxygenated blood into the pulmonary artery. Later part of the truncus is called as bulbous arteriosus. 
which divides into right and left aortic trunks. In frog's heart, sinus stenosis acts as pacemaker. It is a thin walled chamber formed by union of two superior and single inferior vena cava. Sinus venosus opens into the right atrium. The junction of sinus venosus and atrium is marked by a thin white line called as crescent. You can note crescent over here. Within crescent, parasympathetic ganglia called Remax ganglia are located. In mammalian heart, pacemaker is SA node which is situated within the right atrium itself. Amphibian heart lacks specialized conducting system and conduction of impulses from sinus venosus to atria and then to ventricle occurs through the cardiac muscles themselves. Another important difference is frog's heart lacks coronary circulation. As the walls are comparatively thinner, cardiac muscles can obtain necessary oxygen through the blood within the chambers. Now, most of you may think there are so many anatomical and physiological differences between amphibian heart and mammalian heart. Then, why are we using frog's heart for cardiac muscle experiments? This is because fundamental properties of cardiac muscles are common in both amphibian as well as mammalian heart. Another reason is frog's heart is very sturdy. It does not need stringent requirements with respect to oxygen supply, nutrient supply, as well as ionic balances. Hence, cardiac muscle preparation can work for longer duration with basic laboratory conditions. Now you know the parts of frog's heart. Let us now understand the components of normal cardiogram. To record cardiogram, heart lever is positioned properly and the pointer is touched lightly to the kinograph and it is set into motion. Cardiac muscle activity is recorded for sufficient duration. Okay. So here every downstroke is systole and upstroke is diastole. As you can observe, systole is not a single uniform downstroke. There is a small downstroke followed by a little upstroke or a pause and then a larger downstroke, correct? So this initial small downstroke is due to atrial systole. The smaller upstroke or a pause indicates atrial diastole. It is then followed by a prominent downstroke which represents ventricular systole. The next upstroke is ventricular diastole. And the cycle repeats. Height or the amplitude of cardiogram represents strength of the muscle contraction or the force of the muscle contraction. As atria are thin walled, their force of contraction is less and the ventricle being thick walled, its force of contraction is stronger. In this cardiogram, you can also observe a small contraction towards the end of the ventricular systole. It is due to contraction of truncus arteriosus. Sinus venosus contractions also can be recorded if the instrument is sensitive and the lever is adjusted properly. They occur just prior to the atrial contraction. So here we have another cardiogram where you can note a minute sinus contraction. It is then followed by atrial contraction and then the ventricular contraction. So simply by observing normal cardiogram, we can confirm that sinus venosus is pacemaker of the frog's heart. Impulses are generated in sinus venosus and then they are conducted to the atria and then to the ventricle. So this proves the property of automaticity. If you observe these contractions of normal cardiogram, every contraction is occurring in a rhythmic fashion. So this proves the property of rhythmicity. So together, automaticity and rhythmicity is also known as autorhythmicity. Now if you observe the sequence of contractions of different chambers, it is first the sinus venosus, then the atria and then the ventricle. It proves that impulses which are generated from sinus venosus are conducted to the atria and then to the ventricle. 
so this also proves the property of conductivity okay so this is how we used to mount the cardiac muscle preparation and record normal cardiogram in the next video we shall learn about the working of kinograph hope you find this video useful if you have any suggestions or if you have any questions do post them in the comment section below subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more such videos on experimental physiology thank you for watching and see you in the next video